how many people can remember last year's Christmas lecture? It's a different one. What do we have up here? All right. Well, in the spring, I'm going to do a lecture called Compromised, because so many people that I see, including myself, have had their health compromised through a variety of things. I'm amazed at for example, there was a guy in here recently that had a lot of trouble getting himself fixed and he had an infected tattoo on his leg which made it extremely challenging. Nobody knew that he had that. That was a tall, things like that. Dr. Jeff, February 1st, 2017, is going to do a lecture on the adrenal thyroid connection. I really enjoy both of those glands working well. Many things in your environment are interfering with both of those many things in your environment. Our websites, my son has put together all this, so thank you Derek for all the things that you've done, so how you can get a hold of us and our website, and this is what the, this is one of the benefits of having kids. <laughs> On Facebook, we got all kinds of crazy things, people are enjoying it, I keep my crazy stuff going, because the world's going crazy right now. YouTube, all our stuff's on YouTube. I have over a million hits on just one lecture on YouTube. So, there. And it, it's the, the autoimmune lectures got everybody stirred up. That, that's like the number one lecture in Canada that they watch when they have children. Our protocols, and I put this stuff up, all the good teachers out there are dead. All the Dr. Versendahl, you know, Dr. Goodhart, Dr. Dobbins, Dr. Gonzalez, it is really getting thin at the top, very thin. I got a, I want a picture of my staff, so who you're talking to, front staff, I will let them remain somewhat anonymous. <laughs> my back staff, only missing Morgan wasn't there. These gals have been with me a long time. There's who you're talking to in the office in your Skype appointments. There's inventory, and she's probably my longest employee. Sue and Shannon's a newer gal that does all the shipping. So around the world, if you're, you guys are doing a great job getting stuff to you quickly. That's who handles all your stuff. Well, since last lecture, and I want to mention a couple things. Number one, I got to before I start on this stuff, it looks like we might actually be back to Christmas this year. So it's going to be a Merry Christmas. I think Jesus is back in the Christmas season, which I'm kind of personally happy to see that. I want to thank God for this wonderful year because I have absolutely been watched over. I want to thank my wife and kids, all the mentors that have made me what I am today as a very high school C student public education kid which is what most of us got tangled up in. And uh, I just want to make sure I acknowledge those people at this time of the year. I found something interesting since the last lecture, which I thought was a little bit of a joke. The company that made Zyklon B in World War II, fill in the blank, just bought Monsanto. Now the pesticide company makes our food, and I think if they put chemo in the food, we would have the circle of life complete. <laughs> Unbelievable. <clears throat> okay, now my son likes to race motorcycles at 170 miles an hour, and he does it very well. He decided at 14 miles an hour to hit that tree and break his leg. That was, I took five days off, five, six, and seven, we went up north. Out of that entire field, my son said, I know I can hit that tree. And he did. He did. Dylan, raise your hand. There's my son. Oh. Happy Hank here, he's laying there. Here's Jake. His troublemaker friend, Jake, and John was also there, Morgan's boyfriend that works in the back. He hit a peg, 
catapulted him into the tree, the bike fell on him and crushed his leg, two major breaks in his leg, in the middle of the woods. The ambulance ride, etc., etc. This is his leg. This is messed up. He said, you know, ambulance ride to Traverse City from Grayling, ambulance ride to Grayling, another one to Traverse City. I haven't got those bills yet. <laughs> this was a messed up leg. There's his femur head. This is just a mess. Fun, fun, fun. Now, as soon as I got him out of there, now he's laying in the hospital with his leg all busted up, and I walked up to him and said, Dylan, you know in the movie when the dad's standing next to the kid and says, I would do anything to change places with you? I said, that's just the movies. That's not me. <laughs> and I said, it's all over. I said, I said, it is all a lie. All of it. <clears throat> now, that's a ground up spine, and I'm not going to go into it. That's in my shake every day. I had that in my shake tonight. The slap shots that I've taken, I gave back to the puck as hard as I've taken them. I'm very attentive to my frame because of all the sports that I've been clocked with slap shots from five feet away by guys that could shoot because I play a lot, you're going to get hit eventually. I have been clocked very, the last one was right here. That's kind of funny, I mentioned his name and someone at Paige said, I know him, I'm gonna get him. <laughs> it was funny. It, it was, I was in the way, it's just simple, you got in the way. <clears throat> a ground up spine, the whole thing. This is the two things I've had Dylan on for his frame, it's bone. At 15 ACP a day for vascular repair. His physical therapist is right there. The guy from Northfield, I want your card up, but you didn't get your card, I your card up. <laughs> this is what I did. Now the point is, it's the middle of the night. I've trained my kids well, so they walk into the middle of the night, and they said, well, I'm here to give you a shot. And Dylan says, what's in the shot? She said, I don't know. He said, don't you think you should know? And she said, that's a good idea. I should probably know. <laughs> True? So he calls me. You know, I give me some shot. I said, well, she leaves, goes back with the little pamphlet. It's a blood thinner. What do you think? Well, your leg's pretty busted up. I think you should do it. So they did, they did the little blood thinner. As soon as I got him out of there, everything was stopped. I wanted to take, so when you're a kid, you asked me, I took this thing over right there. There's my enzymes. There's my vascular repair. There's my inflammation. There's my raw bone. And we'll show you his progress in a minute. That's eight weeks ago. The surgeon said this is a six to 12 month injury. This is six to 12, we had great surgeons. Dr. James Bowles is following up here at Providence. He's a great guy. People don't do this in eight weeks with two broken legs. This is two days ago. Next. This is today. Everybody's standing around going, what a retarded kid. No. <laughs> They're standing around going, how could you possibly? This is a major broken leg with rods and screws. The supplements cost less than everybody that he has seen. So when you cheap out on yourselves, which America has done, that my deductible's 12 grand, uh, the ambulance ride's probably five. So you put out buying $1,500 worth of pills, that's what he looks like. And that's in eight weeks. So you'll probably be snowboarding in four months. And this was a six to 12 month injury if you know how to do it right. I stopped the meds, 12 days of pain pills, and that's it. And those were partial pain pills because he's buried half his friends from all the motorcycle Oxycontin heroin journey. It's a fun journey today. Look at John, he's the shell of the man he used to be. <laughs> now, I got a chance to speak to a class in a city that I won't name. I had 30 black second grade kids that were the sweetest, most wonderful kids. I have a book. I talked to them. I had a blast with these kids. You can imagine me talking to a room full of black kids. All right. 
How many of you guys drink milk? How many of you guys like milk? And all these kids raise their hand. These little black kids. How many like milk? They all raise their hand. I said, how many kids out here does milk make your stomach hurt? They all raised their hands. I said, see, you're black. You can't drink milk. It makes your stomach hurt. Who told you to do that? <laughs> Next time your mother says you got to drink milk, say, I can't digest milk. Dr. Ted said not to. <laughs> this lady is a, is a patient of mine. And one kid raised his hand. What do you think he asked me? Do your kids get shots? And the teacher just put her head down going, oh boy, here we go. And I was very nice. No, my kids don't get shots. I said, do you guys like to get out in the sun? They said, no. I said, you're black. You need to get in the sun. And this little kid looked at me and said, I heard that before. <laughs> so I got all these thank yous. I brought him a pizza party. I got all these thank yous. It was so funny. And the point of this book is the last line in the book. And the last kid, Jamari, says, I hope you vote. <laughs> I hope you vote. Okay. So I had fun. It was a lot. I want to do it again. Oops, I got to go back. Oh, my gosh. You know, today, kids, now my kids... You know, we're homeschooled a long way, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot to that story. And my point is, today's kids, you got, you got your EpiPen? Check. You got your peanut allergy? Don't get near a peanut. You know you'll die. Check. You got your retainer? Check. Got your inhaler? Check. Got your antihistamine? You know your Claritin. You know those runs? Check. Take your Ritalin? Yep. You got your gluten-free lunch? Good to go. It's 48 degrees. I'm going to take you to the bus stop because it's cold out. I'm driving to work. I watch them today. The parents got the kids in the car. It's 48 degrees. The foreign kids are standing outside. He's got his bazooka, his backpack, and all this stuff. Our kids are inside just to shiver up a storm because they're going to have to go out in that cold from the car to the bus, and it's going to just kill them. But today, in 1912, when you went to school, you had a shoe with a hole in it, you got a moldy sandwich, and you got a chance to play on the gym set. <laughs> Look at the playground equipment of the past. They had to empty all yours because your kids trip over a chalk line. <laughs> today, 80% of the mothers that are patients of mine would be running under that the whole day to catch them before something happened. My goodness gracious. I don't know why that's up there. Who cares? Now, I sit there. Somebody left this. I think one of my employees left this. I picked this up. Nothing makes me feel better than to eat genetically engineered gum you had to, you put, you, they had to, you couldn't just give us gum anymore. So today, and my wife showed this to me, M&M peanuts, would you genetically modify, would you put like caterpillar? They're genetically modifying all our food and no one's explaining with what. Well, that's what you get to figure out later. Well, what happens if it messes me all up? Well, that's what it was designed to do. <laughs> I mean, you shouldn't figure that out. Everything has these labels on it. They've made food out of things that maybe might not even be food. Now, for you folks confused about fats and oils, I eat differently because of our schedule. Now, look, I am burnt out. I'm 59 years old. I'm 10 months from being 60. People ask, I play hockey four nights a week. My son asked me, as I just turned 59 in October, what does 60 feel like? I said, it feels about like 40. I don't feel much different between 60 and 40. I've avoided all. I fired the pediatrician when I was 10. There's nothing in the food. This is 10.50 a day. I did this shake before I came here. I play hockey four nights a week on this. This is what I come in. There's nothing in the food. I cannot have the energy to do what I've done on the crap that you guys are eating. There's nothing in the food. 
I'm burnt out on weed allergies, and people go to Europe, they have no weed allergy. I'm burnt out on all the allergies, take a vacation, they all disappear. Get, you know, I had one today. She, you know, my daughter well, did go to Germany, and they did, did all disappear. Exactly. I am not going to participate in the game. This is my groceries. I spend 300 bucks a month, I get two of these a day, and eat junk around this. So after, after that lunch, that dinner, licorice, candy, and popsicles. I'm dead serious. I got my stuff, and I'll sleep like a log on that. I poop fine, I feel fa There's nothing in the food. You're trying to run on nothing, and you wonder why you are. Look at this. I walk through the mall for Pete's sakes. It's zombie land right now. They're killing the people, and they're feeding them this filth that is not making you grow. It's a mess. So when you want to do my schedule, this is what I replaced it with. I don't go to expensive restaurants. I'm not hungry anymore. I lost 30 pounds. I'm no longer insulin resistant. I've never felt better. This is raw, organic food. It's not synthetic. It's been so easy to do, it's ridiculous. I couldn't be any easier. Look at this. You have trouble giving your kid. There's Kelly's twins. There's Jeff's child. They fight over this stuff. You, can't, you say, you can't drink it? Watch them. They, Kelly, true? Her daughters, they've been... Amy, where's your picture? Amy's got four kids. How old are they? 11, 8, 5, and 3. 11, 8, 5, and 3. I said, Amy, get a picture. She has trained her kids to chew all their pills. They chew fish oil. They don't know any different. Everything has been chewed till they learn to swallow. It's easy if you start out like this. The kids fight for their shake. And I'll show you her kids on a trampoline at how old? 17 months. When they get in kindergarten, your boys better duck. <laughs> I am dead serious. Thank you, Brian, for... He's a great patient. I just Skyped with him this week. I had a great time with my Skype patients. This is what my life has turned into. There's nothing in the... So people ask me, what are you doing? It's simple. You want to know what this did to me? Watch one minute of each lecture going backwards, because all I've done, I turned over my cells differently from the junk I was eating. Very simple to do. It couldn't get any easier. Now, I got four hockey games in the next four days. I'm going to concentrate on saturated fat and protein. Now, before this lecture, I did that, that, and I threw some of that in. It's mostly a standard shake for me. I want everything. The most expensive shake I can possibly human do is 11 bucks a day. It's simple. This is my lady after my own heart. The oldest living woman. No fruits, no veggies. Eggs and a simple diet that works. This is my Twitter. I said, find out what really works for you, not what somebody else tells you. Everybody's trying to tell you what works for you. And people, Linda McCartney said, everybody's got to eat like me. Well, she died at 52. It wasn't really the best way to eat. So everybody's got their idea how to work. Well, that's what she just hit 117 doing. The FDA banned the sale of soaps. All those soaps that you are carrying on your purses still have been banned. You're all carrying in with these. Now, all this stuff... All this stuff has de demasculated your boys. So when they said, the reason they said why they wanted to get rid of this is ridiculous. That was so toxic to humanity, it caused all kinds of opportunistic germs. Now look, there's a lot of people out there coming in with fungal and yeast infections deeply. It's a new thing that you're seeing more and more because the fungicides on the produce is killing the patients. So my point is, when you find yourself, I want to throw something out to those people. I'm not one of those, but this is, the fungicides are being used all over our food, and people are picking up funguses from the fungicides. Very simple. Now today, I did two of each of those. I want my respiratory tract as clear, clear as possible, because clearing my throat, and I was a bottle-fed kid. My allergies came from being bottle-fed, not handled correctly. How come the pills, how come my cough won't go away? How come I have to take so many pills to get better? A patient walked in, that right there is a layer of black mold out of the water thing she was drinking. That's black mold, it's hard to see. I just looked at this. I don't know why you're not getting better. These are the mistakes that the patients make. I have no capacity to know how filthy your room is. I have no capacity to know you know, if you have 46 dogs, I have no capacity. You know, if you're going to drink 
you know, black mold all day because you didn't clean your glass. That's black mold. Unbelievable. Bug bites. I got a feeling right now, right now, I got a big feeling as this huge bug bite thing happened. I got a feeling you guys and us, I'm talking to all of us, we're just really sick. It's not that the bugs are that strong anymore. I got a feeling we are wearing down. And bug bites that we fought off in the past, you can't fight off anymore. Oh, I didn't know we had a second little, we're getting big time. There's a second slide in that slide, Kelly. That Ray's work, didn't it? Ibuprofen. <laughs> Ibuprofen, hand sanitizer, flame retardants, antibiotics. People love this stuff. I watch her slather your little kid's hands off every time he just touches anything. That stuff failed years ago. I got to tell a story. <clears throat> I Skyped with this guy two weeks ago. He's a great patient. He's all fixed up. I forgot what country state he's from. He was doing this. He said to me, this is two weeks ago, he said, I got all done. He said, I got, to tell you, I got to say something to you. I said, what's that? He said, he's 40 years old. Girls are paying attention to me now. He said, I'm getting attention I've never had before, and I'm not used to this. All he was doing was this. And he said, he's about six weeks into this. One kid said to me, my voice is deeper. His voice is changing. The chemicals have raised the voices of the men. And it's atrazine has made them have those high voices. I've had men tell me my voice is changing in four weeks. And this kid was getting all this attention. He said, nothing's changed in my life. Nothing. I'm taking these pills and girls are paying attention to me. I said, well, you're less of a pansy than you were before. <laughs> I didn't have a lot of trouble. I'm a guy. I still am a testosterone-fueled guy because I'm an athlete. I've just, I have played this correctly. I try to keep the estrogen out of my body. You're going to learn how to do that. And my point is, I'm encouraging the men. I honestly believe, I want to say something. I honestly believe we are in for a strange future in this country. I don't care who won the election. We're going to have a very strange future on all sides. I don't want to be really weak going into this future because I think things have a potential to get really strange really quick. And everybody knows the world's getting kind of odd right now. And all, you know, the people that are awake, get yourself. If you fold up like a deck of cards because you didn't wash your hands properly, which is what the men are like today, you better toughen up because I don't think you're heading for a future that's going to be easy. And I wanted to send a message to Chicago from my grandmother. Kelly, this is my son's project for CCS. This was one of his college projects. I'd like to say hello to Chicago because you're getting killed over there deeply. This is for the Chicagoans. Pay attention. License and registration, please. So you have a concealed pistol license. Um, are you carrying any firearms in the vehicle today? I have a 45 in the glove box, a 357 in the center console, and a 38 special in my purse. What? What are you afraid of? Not a damn thing. <laughs> I'm skyping with. Oh, she's going to see this. I'm Skyping. I got a lot of great patients in Australia. I'm Skyping with an Australian nurse about three weeks ago. She's got MS. Got MS. Nurse with MS. All right. Delightful. The vaccines, MS. Well, her sister's a nurse. She's got MS. Well, my sister's got MS. She said, my son's autistic. I have an autistic son. And her husband was like, you know, the only one still standing halfway. And I said, do you guys got any guns over there? And they're like, oh no. They took them all away a couple, you know, 20 years ago. They got rid of all the guns. Nobody's got the guns, not the people. I said, look, I'll tell you what, I'll put a 38 in the box when I send you your pills. 
I said, you're all getting sick over there from forced vaccines. When they tell you they got to get a shot, tell them Dr. Tent said I'm not. He's from Detroit. He's, he's helping me out with this. So they're laughing over there. They have to line up for shots, pills, and chemicals. Don't line up for shots and pills and chemicals. You have a right to say, no, don't cave in. Unbelievable. This is my daily. I want my estrogen gone, my pesticides gone, my chemicals, all you puffied men out there. The kids are all swollen from plastics, estrogen, and <clears throat> you're all puffy. I'm very fussy about my detox pathways. That's estrogen, that's pesticides. That wasn't open on Michael J. Fox. That wasn't open, Muhammad Ali's been sprayed to death. These are all the people down in Florida shaking because they can't get rid of the pesticides they're spraying their house with. I take this seriously. That's or, those two, that's that or that. Those are not and. I, this is my vegetables and I'm done. That was it for my vegetables for the day. All right, thank you. Jeff, for down in Louisiana, his kids have been great patients. The kids talk to parents in the sea and me. The parents have that John Hancock Blue Cross mentality like the family I grew up in, the insurance thing from Ford, the ruined brain. And take a look at this. He had to go back on his Nexium and Prilosec. What happened to my prostate? Now pay attention to this. This is a good one. <clears throat> he started taking Nexium again. He's going back into his prostate cancer thing. I said, look, you're blocking the estrogen pathway in your liver. You're blocking that, that's the alcohol pathway. That's why all you got drunk driving tickets. It's the same pathway. That's this pathway. That's all the farmers that are shaking. Look what happened to my PSA level after quitting Zantac and Nexium. What was it about those two drugs that raised my PSA level? I need to know so I can tell my friends and family who are currently taking those medications. It's filling you up with estrogen, pesticides, and chemicals. It blocks the pathway in your liver. People are shaking from golfing, taking that stuff. You block your pesticide. The theme, I, I, there's tons of stories about this. That antacids, antidepressants, and antihistamines block the liver. Your kids are turning half Bruce Jenner on this stuff. <laughs> Nobody gets this. Claritin does that. Prozac does that. Prozac, Paxil, Nexium, Prilosec. This is a catastrophe. So now, 4.7, stopping those down to 1.3. No longer a prostate problem. How easy is that? I fixed his stomach. He had a couple heartburn things, so he had to go back on that. Not for Pete's sakes. Look what it's doing to you. Good job, Jeff. He's very happy. He didn't have to get a painful biopsy. How do they biopsy that prostate? Exactly. <clears throat> My mouth. That's what I've been compromised with for my pediatrician being a yo-yo. He doesn't know what a mineral deficiency looks like on a kid because he lives in la-la land. I have leg aches and nosebleeds, all kinds of muscle, you know, things. So I got implants now and he gave me an infection in my face. Dr. Vitti fixed, he was the guy that did my implants. He did a great job. I was very happy with that. He takes off my implants to do something, pulls off the top plate. Now listen to this. Doctors, listen to this. This is a special one. He, he looks under my implants and he says, you have perfect oral hygiene. You have perfect oral hygiene. You're right there. There's Dr. Reedy. I wanted to see you there. Ray, stand up. I already know who you are. You did a great job. He built my teeth. Now he sat. So you left the room. I didn't even see you there. You left the room. I tell real stories. You left the room. And his hygienist, he always leaves the room, leaves him with the hygienist. He goes and does the other patients. And I said, lean over here. And she said, what? I said, I've never flossed a day in my life. <laughs> and he said, how did you do this? I said, simple. I use fast food. If you have plaque in your mouth, you have plaque in your heart. 
I dissolved my plaque with, from the inside out. And he's right there, and I did it right in front of him. Not flossing a thing ever. <laughs> and I only told that to his nurse. I didn't tell it to him. He did a, I was happy that he was here because when he got done messing around with my mouth, my jaw worked. And I have enough TMJ patients that I do not want to be a TMJ patient. That's why I wanted to say, look, my jaw is, my ears don't ring, everything still works. I was very happy to have my jaw because people don't know how to adjust today. And you're going to find that out in part two of my lecture. Vitamin D for the winter. I like taking this drops. I do this in my shake and I'm done. I don't want to mess with the pills. I got enough pills. I like the liquid drops easy. I get my vitamin D up because it's the winter time and it's cloudy. I like vitamin D for a thousand reasons. Everybody needs to do that. Surviving winter. They crammed all this. I like healthy blood. I like healthy blood. It's immune strengthening. I did four Immuplex today. I love chlorophyll pearls. I love iodine. It wakes my thyroid up without me having a thyroid problem. Winter. Now to keep going. Chiropractic. <clears throat> oh boy. I finally did something to make my profession happy. I've never done much to make them happy. Because I always had a different practice than my profession. It just worked out that way, and you'll know why. Now, the first thing I want to do is the chiropractic part. I have never had a ton of back pain. So I said, this day, I'm going to apologize to the crowd. Some of the best chiropractors might be people who hurt a lot. I don't really hurt a lot. So I was sick all the time. I get adjusted every six to eight weeks. Not because I'm in pain, because I feel completely twisted out of place. A patient said to me one time, I feel discombobulated. That's a perfect, when my body's all, I got little aches and pains everywhere. Getting a, an, I don't know how you live without being adjusted. I have no clue. When I go to the store, I walk at 60. I walk through the mall. Pretty simple to walk through the mall. I get a chance to watch everybody walk that's never been adjusted. And this is how, this is how everybody today, your kids, your adults, every dragging a leg, you're doing something, barely alive, looking for a chair. I just, I, I just like, you could have, you could have done this better. You were trained to do it wrong and everybody did. So number one, I do a very, I went to Palmer College of Chiropractic. I do a very standard high velocity. I do real, how many people have been adjusted in this room by me? I do real adjustments. I do not do lightweight adjustments. I have no interest or time. I got to get fixed. Number one, you basically hear things move. I'm not adjusting in front of people because Americans are scared if they don't wash their hands out of the bathroom. So to adjust in front of people, they'll be terrified. My college experience. Seven weeks in the school, I started with Dr. Versendahl. He taught me how to muscle test. I started, my first adjustment was on Ralph Fiedler. I was in second quarter. He said, he set me all up, see what you can do. And I went, <clears throat> popped his neck in place. And it was very, I'm an athletic. It's an athletic thing. If you're not athletic, it's a hard job. There's tons of uncoordinated chiropractors and they stink at it. And a lot of you've been adjusted by them. You can't make yourself a chiropractor. If you're uncoordinated, you are in trouble. It's harder. So seven weeks into school, I started muscle testing. That taught me how to adjust. I walked into chiropractic school. I was in eighth quarter. I did 250 adjustments. I walked in. I muscle tested somebody, did my typical adjustments that I did on all of you. And Dr. Edkin, the associate director of the clinic, said, you're done. I adjusted one person out of 250 people. I didn't admit this for 22 years ever. I was afraid to say that. I never went to clinic because I really didn't have to because Dr. Versendahl taught me how to adjust. So they saw I did one. Now I had to do physicals and urinalysis and x -ray. I had to get through all that stuff. But I was like, 10, how are you doing in clinic? Well, I'm done. I said, I never saw you there. I said, well, I know, but I'm still done. So just keep looking the other way. <laughs> Don't look this way. Don't look this way. So it made it easier. Dr. Versendahl, thank goodness, taught me everything. They did 100 people, now to understand what you're looking at, they took 100 people that never had pain. Never, ever, never, ever, never, ever had pain. Ever, never, ever. You had to sign an affidavit. Ran to an MRI tube and gave them to surgeons. But the surgeons never saw the patient. 
They scheduled 53 for back surgery by looking at the MRIs, not the patient. You should see the bulges on these things that don't hurt. You can't, it's a tool. It's not the beginning, it's not the end. It's a tool. Knee surgery. They've done phony knee surgeries who healed as fast as the real knee surgeries. They didn't tell who did it. I, I've seen all the studies. So my point is, jumping into the most aggressive stuff first is not the way to do it. Me. There's my neck. We're going to cover me first. Now, as an athlete, I get these little spurs starting in the back. This is where the nerves come out in the back. I got these little calcifications that make me hard to adjust. I don't need a panty waist adjustment. I need to get nailed to break these loose and my arms let go like this. But I can't have this little thing. No, adjust it. I get a real adjustment because my arms ding, dinging goes away. It's simple. So this one will bother my elbow. When that one's out, four or five makes this hurt. I can't even hardly adjust. This one makes my left hand tingle. There's a new one on the x-ray that I didn't have before. That five, six is going backwards. I got to keep this thing happy because that one, that's your arm. That's, that's the carpal tunnel on the dentist. And I want you to notice something on this. There's my low back. Now, I'm concerned about my old hips. I've been slowing this down with the supplements. I don't want to mess around with hip replacements. I don't want to mess around with anything until I have to do this. I'm concerned about my hips. I've been on a trampoline forever. These are my discs. I'm very happy with my disc heights still. There is a spur. There's L3, L4. I have trouble with that disc. Tried to bulge there. So I'm trying to keep the calcium deposits out of my hips by keeping my pH adjusted correctly. And I want you to notice this. There's something special on this when I go through x-rays. And I'll get to this later. There's no gas on that x-ray. There's no gas on my x-ray. Now you watch every x-ray from here on out. I'm going to get to this later. It wasn't for this reason I'm showing you that. I'm just showing you my x-rays. I've been on a trampoline for 42 years and I'm very pleased with my disc heights. I take a ton of minerals. I'm very happy at 59 and two months to have this disc height. I'm very happy to have this. There's no gas and look at those bones. There's a reason I'm showing you this. Watch. This is what gas looks like. It's all over people's x-rays. Their stomachs don't digest their food because their gas only forms when you're alkaline. Exactly what all the health food stores told you to do. Make yourself alkaline. Buy your alkaline water, get your alkaline this. They've ruined you. I am acidic. They made you alkaline. That's backwards. That's an alkaline stomach. Now, look at this guy, this big, oh, who's, this guy's as big as you. Stand up for a second. These people, people came all the way from Muskegon. Now, your lovely wife, did you get a real adjustment coming from Muskegon? Did. did you ever have one like that in Muskegon? No. Okay, good. <laughs> now, look at this guy. Look at the size of him. Why don't you look at him? I did, the, I had two of these in a week. Pay attention to this, this is a good one. Let's go back. Here's me. Look at my bones. Look how white those bones are. This guy walks in, I take one look at him, I said, how much coffee do you drink? And he started stumbling, and he's 10 to 20 cups a day for 40 years. And you've sucked all the calcium out of your bones. Look how light that man's bones are. There's an osteoporotic man from 40 years of coffee. Now I'm treating him, there's good hip spaces, better than mine. He's getting some adjustments, not mild stuff, little thin disc, pain down a leg from that disc. Those are hollow. He just looked at me 40 years of 10 to 20 cups a day. Now there's my lumbar, there's his. See the difference? This is, what this is what pop's doing to you. This is what coffee's doing to you. It's sucking the minerals right out of your bones. White bones, I take a hit pretty good. He ain't going to take the same hit. I'll guarantee you he's not going to take that hit. Adam, great patient. Spondylolisthesis. There's a little crack in an L5. It slid forward. I could have got him out of Vietnam for this. Okay, that's called a spondylolisthesis. Again, I looked at this dude. Adam, how much coffee do you drink? Uh, a 10 cups a day. That's exactly. I had two of these guys in a great family. He knows I'm using his x-ray. 
Back to the frame support. Bone, big families, there's your bone tooth. That's what you put your kids on before the dental bills don't kill you. Sorry, Steve. Osteo B plus, calcifood, bones. Bo each tissue responds to its own mineral template. Each tissue. Amy, stand up for a second and I'll talk. Amy's got four kids. She had three cavities in her mouth when she was pregnant. They said, as soon as you get well, done with the pregnancy, we will, get, we will address these cavities. She had them all grown out by the time she went back to the dentist. Yes or no? Thank you for your story, Amy. You're very communicative. <laughs> all the women are coming in with calcifications everywhere in their body. Calcium carbonate, dolomite, oyster shell, spring water, Evian, Perrier is killing you. Your food, your calcium has to be a food source, not coral calcium. You are killing yourselves with your Costco calcium. You've plugged up your arteries. Bad. I am this, this, and this. I don't do that when I do this. I'm very fussy about my mineral density. It runs the show. Kelly got a picture. I think he's still a weenie. This is the men today. This is what you look like when you don't have any minerals in your frame. Everywhere you go, this is what the men look like. Beaten men. Everywhere I go, this is what they all look like. Is it true? Am I making this up? This is mostly, if you're not working it yourself, now the women, they're like this. The women are like this. Now you walk up to that woman, and I'm going to ask you two questions. What's the question? You came from Florida today. I you got a real adjustment. You got a real adjustment today, didn't you? All the way from Florida. What was the question I asked you? I forgot my question. See, he forgot all the way from Florida. It's the pesticides and the sprays. <laughs> <laughs> I want, I will buy that posture. The men today come in looking like they're all beat up before they've even been beat up. Kind of interesting. Things that suck the calcium out of your bones. What are these? What's a protein pump inhibitor? Tell me what that is. What's a protein pump inhibitor? It's the same I think I just showed you. That guy, the protein pump inhibitor, was what made his PSA go up. That boxes acid in his liver. Steroids. This sucks the calcium out of your bones. That'll suck. That'll make you all fired up because it's an adrenaline. That'll get you all decalcified. The inhalers will get you all mad and decalcified. Water pills will pee out your minerals. So my patients are aggressively demineralizing themselves. The back. Discs. You only feel a disc when it pushes on something. You, the discs don't hurt much. A bulge is a disc that slipped. A rupture is one where the jelly squirted out. Pretty simple stuff. I want to spend a lot of time. Okay, retired NFL kicker. Loses his leg. I had a blast with this. Been adjusted a thousand times, but not like I adjusted you or you or the rest of you. This guy's famous. He did a famous kick in the Super Bowl. <clears throat> so he comes in losing his leg early. That nerve controls that leg. The hip, L2, L3. I fixed a ton of hips in the pros by doing a high velocity move on that disc. Two adjustments, his leg came back. I retired because of that. I know. When I went down and did the, stand up for a second, gorgeous. When I went down and did the Tampa Bay Lightning, that NHL team, she was the chiropractor on the team. It was, I kid you not, it was her size. And I went down there, she got scared like instantly. And I started throwing some real adjustments around. I was like, oh my gosh, I've never had this done before. <laughs> And then I blew their minds, and they said, this is the NHL. Would you fly around to take care of the team? I, yeah, I can do it once in a while, and pay. I went, hmm? Excuse me? Well, that's what everybody else does. I go, well, I'm not everybody else. I'm not going to close down my office and push you guys away to pay to go take care of them. I said, you've been smoking bad stuff for a long time. <laughs> you mean to tell me you guys go after the doctors who will pay to kiss your butt, not the good ones? Yes. I went, oh my gosh. No wonder you guys are all injured. Tom Wilson called me about his injuries. 
why is everybody hurt? There's nothing in the food, Tom. But <laughs> cranking that disc in place fixed a leg that, boom. He had a famous kick in the Super Bowl. Two threes, there's their hip, there's your knee, there's down your leg. A famous leg. He said, for Pete's sakes, I could have two more years now. Yes, you could have it, you know, five million a year for playing kickball. Motor nerves, yes, it's kickball. <laughs> They're lucky somebody will pay to watch them do that. Motor nerve support. This is why everybody's heart's out of rhythm. I'm very aggressive on my heart to keep my nerves in rhythm. So motor nerve, motor nerves, move things. I like splitting this and this. Now this is complete. B's hard, I can't really get into this because it's a complicated discussion. I like taking six and three of those in the morning. I like my bees because it makes my brain work. Nerve damage. I don't have nerve damage. You got chemo brain, peripheral neuropathy, diabetic neuropathy, autistic kid. You want to repair tiny things. That repairs tiny things. Tiny things, tiny nerve endings. It works fantastic. It's the only thing I've seen do that. Uh, sensory support. I love my oils. I love my oils because my brain's fats and oils, isn't it? I'm pointing at you. 120, yeah, you 128 cholesterol. I still remember you. I saw you sitting there. A wonderful guy coming from Michigan. Raise your hand. New patient. You're here. This is your second visit. You watch my lectures. He wants his brain to work. A wonderful, kind, nice vegetarian fellow from Holt, Michigan. What was your cholesterol? 128. I said, your brain ain't going to work on 128. You ain't getting any fat in your head. Your chart is on my thing to discuss that, and I didn't know you'd be here. Because you were a new patient, what day, Monday? You came from Holt, Michigan. 128, that's how I make my brain work. That's saturated fat. I love saturated fat because that's what my body wants to burn. <clears throat> Very simple. Saturated fat line. This is why my skin looks like this. Fats and oils, all the Lipitor guys look dead. I don't look dead because I'm using essential fats and oils. Simple stuff. Look at this lady. Marie, this is you. Marie, once a month. Do you realize she has no arm pain? Look at, she has no discs. Nothing. It's all calcified. Her biggest complaint is, you know, it's kind of stiff once in a while. I said, thank God, it's only stiff once in a while. Your legs, your arms have no nerves down them, and she has no pain. I've kept that mess loose for years. She doesn't even know her neck's like that. So if she complains, I just show her the x-ray. Just look at this. You have no discs. <laughs> just be happy. It works as good. You have no discs. There's a normal x-ray. Look at the discs. This lady's mostly pain-free. It's unbelievable. I don't even believe it when I look at the x-ray, but don't ask questions. Rib adjustments. You know how messed up ribs are? Doc, you know how messed up ribs are? Kelly's sitting on the bench. This is how I met Kelly, the famous Kelly. How old were you? 19. Kelly played fast pitch softball. You couldn't breathe. She couldn't take a deep breath for how many months? Six months. Six months. Two chiropractors, two MDs. It's a circle jerk. She's been a Kelly can't breathe. Something's wrong. It's a major thing. So they come in. She comes in. How many years ago is that? 17. 17 years ago. So here are parents. Everybody's concerned. Kelly's going to die. Kelly can't breathe. Something's wrong with Kelly's heart. Everything's wrong. I walked in and went, <coughs> and she stood up and went, it's gone. I said, what do you want to talk about now? Well, I want to talk about that when it's gone right now. True? And she's worked for me 17 years. I did that to the Toronto Maple Leafs goalie that they flew in. It was a big mystery. No one could figure out what is this pain in his back. He walked in. The piston trainer picked him out. I, he walked in. And <coughs> it's gone. Ribs. You can't get a rib played right today. Lena. I'll talk about a farmer's wife, Lena. She stands up, simple little gal. I got this sharp pain right here. I saw that your ribs running around. I like <clears throat> a huge explosive noise. She stands up. I'll never forget this. She said, it's gone. I got 40 grand into this. And every one of those turds knew that was a mechanical chest pain. 
But a simple little farmer's, well, you know, that could be your heart. Oh, God, please rule that out. They completely, I watch them grease you guys constantly. I got 40 grand into that pain. It's your heart. Unbelievable. I got away with murder. The whole system's rigged, and I believe it. You just watched a rigged election. They tried their best, didn't they? They just. All right, cross-eyed kids. Kelly's, this Kelly Sitch is an optometrist in Indiana. First kid. Kid comes half out. The doctor grabs him by the neck, completely twists it, pulls it out. The kid comes out completely cross-eyed, just like that. I laid the kid down from Indiana. Dad about curled up in the corner. I grabbed that neck, and the eye went, and it's perfectly straight now. Three of my 11 kids born to women that worked for me had crooked eyes at birth because they were, they were pulled out like a quarterback. So you're seeing lots of torticollis stuff with birth traumas. Shaquille O'Neal's neck is dislocated. That's why he's a clod. Robert Plant's eyes are crossed. Ariba McIntyre's eyes are crossed. He had a horrible accident. I watched for this. Plant's, Shaq's eyes crooked on the right side. That's why he can't shoot. He's a clod. He can't, he can't do anything. He's just big. But all these birth traumas, three of the kids came out out of 11. That's a rough birth trauma. This. The atlas go, your brain stem sits right there. That's the most crucial part of your body. People fly in and drive in to get their atlas adjusted correctly. Because nobody, you get that adjusted wrong, you've you got a problem. 80% of all infants have had trauma to their cervical spine. The Germans noticed that a long time ago. And you don't, you know, it's just, it's all a mess. This kid watches my lecture from New Hampshire. His head came out tilted. I don't even know if Conrad's here today. They fly in and drive in for their adjustments. He watches my lecture, drives in, knew his brain stem's been pinched since the day he was born. Sees that on my lectures, I'm driving to find this guy. I gave him that kamikaze atlas adjustment. His whole side came back to life. <clears throat> Boom. Conrad will see this. I, I Skype with all his family from around the country. It was a serious atlas adjustment. You remember the famous Rachel? Hit it. Rachel. You, what are you going to do with this? Last time Rachel was in here, it was twice as bad as this. And Up to her neck goes out of place. And it stopped. How many months ago was that, Mom? Made I was sure hoping I could do it a second time Three, because I'm filming this. I don't know if I'm going to get this to stop the second time. Now, I'm not remembering that we talked about how that atlas can slide on the brainstem. <clears throat> You're a celebrity now. It's the brainstem. She's one of my fans. Right underneath. It is not so. a simple adjustment. If you don't do it halfway, you don't do it a quarter of the way. You've got to get it. There's that's only half of it. To this, that's two. I put her on the extensilizer to anchor her down so she couldn't move. You notice it's already started to settle down. It took three moves to get this brain oh, stem I've had unpunched. five of these. It's these are when the atlas is just a catastrophe. Easy. Watch. Relax. Mm. You're not going to get a chance that. to see many of these because you're never going to ever see one of these. And there she stops. Doctors She's fine today. These. When her atlas goes out, it's that bad, and nobody no. can get this atlas in place. Mom, so they have to drive know. in or fly in, and I can usually get it to stop. How many psychiatrists or psychologists? She's been to psychiatrists and psychologists and internists and CAT scans and brain scans. Three mm. Okay, next. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dean, she, your, your mother's here. Where's your mother? Ray, stand up. I no, you're going to stand up. I put up with. <laughs> now, this is Sherry's mother that works in the back. This is Sherry's mother. She's been a great patient for years. I've kept her alive 
as we started with one stint, two stints, three stints, we're up to 10 stints. At 15, we're gonna sell her for some kind of metal thing and we're gonna <laughs> melt her down and make a computer chip out of you, Dolly. So this is her son, Dean. Dean, Dean, his atlas is hammered. What the heck happened to you? How did you get these spurs on your atlas? Did you have an injury to your neck? No, really, never. Oh yeah, I forgot, I did have an injury. This is what it's like to deal with the public. This is what it's like. I was in Colorado hauling paper through the mountains with a partner. I was sleeping in the back. Paper's heavy. There's a reason it says go one first gear in the mountains when you're hauling paper. I'm sleeping in the back. The guy tries to go down in third gear. He's hauling 50,000 pounds of paper. Yes. He's going, he's 80 miles an hour downhill. He couldn't stop the thing. The driver bailed out. And the truck ran him over. Ba-boom, ba-boom. He was done just like that. Dean's sleeping in the back. In the mountains of Colorado. He went down a 200-foot ravine. This was worldwide news. They airlifted him out of the canyon. And he forgot to tell me that. <laughs> Oh, you left this out. He left that little detail out about his life. How would you forget this? <laughs> Honest. There's her mom. Unbelievable. He's walking in the next room. All right, what's, what's your adventure today? This, you know Dean's a junkyard dog. You have to run over him about three times with the car because he ain't going down easy. <laughs> This guy comes in, this dentist right here. He's an 80, 80, 75 year old. This was his neck, but I don't have his x-ray. It looked just like that. His hand hurts right there. I have seven dentists right there. He gets carpal tunnel surgery, he wakes up, his hand still hurts. He comes, he's a crabbiest old man. So he comes in here, dentists are crabby, believe me. By the time you're an 80 year old dentist, you're crabby, right, Steve? And you deserve, you have a right to be crabby. So my point is, is look at that. That's the nerve that controls your hand. He said, well, my neck doesn't hurt. I said, you shag the teeth, I'll fix the hand. <laughs> exactly what I said to him. I took three adjustments like I did on that girl, some aggressive adjustments, and his hand, just like that, his hand came back. The point is, what appreciated me, he went back to the hand surgeon. You took my hand apart, there was nothing wrong with my hand when you did this. I had seven dentists like that, and you know, in one year the dentists all rolled in. Dylan's friend, I wish I had his card. He has a nice woodworking business. He's told he had AC separation. He diagnosed with arthritis and limited blood flow to the joint. Look at that backward. Everybody was wrong. Now look at that disc. That controls the shoulder. I grabbed a hold of that kid, jerked his neck in place, and what everybody said it was a shoulder separation. It was a herniated 3-4 disc. It's right here. So adjusting his neck, that's where the pain was. He walks in, for Pete's sake, that pain's gone. They said that was a shoulder separation. No, it's a herniated C3, C4 disc from your motorcycling stuff. <clears throat> Three, four, there's your shoulder. I think that's one of the lions. The shoulder, very simple stuff. This takes out my elbow. This is not my neck. Four or five runs my elbow. Man, does my arm get funky with that one. I have to have my neck done right. Now, this is the gal that won all the gold medals. I didn't ask her for missions, I'm not going to tell you who she is. She won all the gold medals. She was seeing all the chiropractors, she got all the injections in her neck. She had three epidurals in her neck. <clears throat> I grabbed the hold of her and I gave her the kamikaze heave-ho because her neck was blown out on that disc right there. She had completely herniated C5, C6 disc. She'd been to everybody. Took three adjustments. She got seven gold medals after her neck was adjusted. And she was a mess. Second visit, 80%. Real adjustments is how I get these results. It's not weenie adjustments. It's real adjustments. Half of you guys are getting weenie adjustments. I have no capacity to handle all of you. So I'm telling you what's already happened so the next generation can be inspired to do it better. Because this one's really fumbled the ball. Dentist. Steve, this was our buddy when he started with me. 
he should have addressed that neck better because he got tangled up. This really cost him the endings of his hands as he got older. He just sold out, like I said. He's going to go do something else, but he really should have stayed after that neck better because it cost him his grip in his hands. All that spurs, look at that, that's all fused together. That'll make your hands stuck numb. This lady's got a dead hand, five, six, a dead hand. Great results. I want to thank this lady for letting me do this. Vision Spa that does Channel 7. There's the owner. She's delightful. So she can, daily pain, oh, this is this simple. Patient has daily pain pressure behind both ears, both sides of her head, temple is very painful. Okay? Blurred vision in her left eye, also headaches, dizziness, and nausea. In the past six weeks. She did three rounds of antibiotics for an ear infection with no relief. An ophthalmologist said you got bird vision. Well, check it is. That's fine. The MD did a carotid artery scan. That's normal. The cardiologist said heart ultrasound. Well, that was normal. The cardiologist said you might have a brain tumor. Well, the MRI was normal. The ENT said, well, you might have TMJ. She saw an acupuncture. That didn't work. So she walked in, and it was like Kelly. What's the matter? Oh, for Pete's sake, sit. And she went, it stopped. <laughs> OK. Thank you. This was about two weeks ago. Vision Spa on Beck. She was, her jaw was out. Where's Rebecca? Rachel. Where's Rachel? Rachel, stand up. Now, Stephen, I want you to see this. I said, put Rachel next to Steve. She's one of my kindred souls because she had all her teeth pulled out like me. So I want you to pay attention to Rachel. She's, she's the ringleader of the crew. She takes my stuff and spreads it everywhere, don't you? She's protected. How many kids do you think you've protected from shots? Hundreds. Hundreds. So she came in about three weeks ago. She said, well, I finally did it. Now, this is important for you, Steve. She said, I finally did it. I went and had all my teeth pulled out. I feel so much better, but I can't hear. She said, I'm deaf. I can't hear. I said, how's your jaw? She said, it's fine. I said, your jaw's out of joint. She said, feels, now, you engineer patients, I would have argued for four months, I would have had to have a CAT scan, a brain scan, not with Rachel. She sat on the table, I got up behind her on the table, and both ears went, and she could hear. There was nothing wrong with her jaw. Her jaw was completely out of joint with no pain. And did, how long did it take for your hearing to come back? A second. Both ears with no pain in the jaw. So TMJ, it took me a quarter of a second. That's, you know, a $50,000 jaw adjustment. This is how backwards things are today. People that don't know anything are teaching people who don't know anything. And everybody's making a poop ton of money off you and nothing's happening except they're making a poop ton of money and you feel like an idiot going from doctor to doctor with this kind of nonsense. This is the, this is the group that takes care of Channel 7. Right there. Thank you, Ann, for that. Her husband's great. Her daughter's been getting results for the first time in her life. They're all excited. Go over there and ask them about it. This is what I did to set now. This is what I did to seven players on the Tampa Bay Lightning. I walked into the room. They said, we have seven torn rotator cuffs. Out of 30 players, you have seven? Yes, we have seven. Watch. Hit it. This is what I did to six. Charlotte people. was working out this morning and felt something give in her shoulder. Put your arm out, hold tight. Now, this, you can't find, I might not find one at the right time, so I'm going to come Charlie. over here. Charlie. This works. <coughs> now, I listen. Look straight ahead. I just relax this, because if you guys will listen, you can hear something real simple, because it, oh, and it just popped in place. And that, ah. Uh, Okay. Hold tight. Aren't you scared, everybody? How does that feel? Good. Now, and I did tight. that to six pro Sit. players in front of the doctor. So your shoulders out of joint. It's not the rotator. Cut. No shoulders out of joint. No, it's the rotator. No shoulders out of joint. No, it's the rotator. No shoulders out of joint. <laughs> the last one had a shoulder out of had a rotator cuff. I knew the last one. It was simple. His arm was sling with a bag of ice taped right there. I said, Well, there's your one torn rotator. At least you can find a rotator cuff. Like I said with pro doctors, it's like point to the rotator cuff. No. Try again. 
No, back here. They can't point to it most of the time. It's in the back. It's not here, and it's not here. They only learn that term about the shoulder. They don't have a fallback plan. It's a rotator cuff. No, it's not. It's the shoulder. But that's not supposed to happen, so just act like it didn't. <laughs> you can't throw your shoulder out. Lisa is a wonderful patient. It took four months to heal her knees. That's why she's here. She said, I woke up, I took, she didn't whine. She took her pills for four months. She said, one day I got up, my knee pain was gone, and it stayed gone. It healed. It took four months to heal a torn knee. That's real. About a week, it's four months. Thank you, Lisa. I won't say nothing about the Obama discussions we had for eight years. <laughs> She's a teacher. Rod, my buddy, this guy takes care of all our doors. I, had to, I said, Rod, I got to help you out. I'm going to help you out. Give Rod business because the doctor's ruined his knees and he's a hardworking dude like me. Here's Rod. September 2, I watched this guy walk down, the, he's here for his back. And to watch him walk, I'm like, what the heck happened to you? You look like you've had a long night. <laughs> and he said, they took the cartilage out of my knees. I said, why? Because they wanted to, and I had insurance. So this is Rod in 2012. I'm like, why? Well, the knees hurt. I took out all his cartilage. All right. Now, I told him some pills to take. You're not going to believe this. This is why the public, Rod's, the, there's people that just follow instructions with zero lip. Rod's one of them. Watch. I put him on. I let him rotate through some pills. I put him on my stuff. Watch. That's unbelievable. You got one with both. And Kelly, I got one. Look. I have no clue how to even tell you that. That's Rod four years later taking his supplements. I, I don't believe it. I wouldn't think that would have even happened. So he was in today. I can't, I can't believe it. All right, keep going. Congratulations, Rod. Now, this is one of the Red Wings. So he says, I'm bone on bone. I said, really? I said, I'll shoot an x-ray to we'll see if you're really bone on bone. There, does that look like bone on bone to you? He was told he's bone on bone. This is the kind of stuff the pros get. I'm bone on bone. Watch this. I said, how much does your, does your right knee hurt more than your left? He said, yes. I said, well, look at your right knee. You got these hollow spots. Did you have surgery on this knee? He said, yes. Not this one, this one. I said, well, I can see the plates all roughened up. I said, look at all those hollow spots. Your bone's dead. You had surgery. They disturbed the vessels. And you got avascular necrosis. I said, you got hollow bones. See the hollow bones? He said, well, the NHL doctor never saw that. I said, I'm sure he didn't. I'm not surprised. I'm having to show them and read their x-rays for them because they can't. These niggas were feeling great in two weeks. That's not bone on bone. And when people say that, ask to see your bone on bone. I'm amazed how many of you have never seen your x-rays. I can't believe the stuff they, I never saw that. They just said I had it. Boy, you follow instructions well. <laughs> Drinkers. Avascular necrosis, there's hips being eaten away from booze. Too much booze. <clears throat> the Tabbitt family, one of my favorite families. I got this guy, there's what the kids look like growing up playing basketball. I got this guy playing basketball with those knees at 26, taking the supplements, and he's doing fantastic with crummy knees. I said, make as much money as you can because you're going to need knee replacements when you're 45 and you want to be able to afford it. Great family. Inflammatory things, be careful. These are real, you know, this is a strong enzyme. Great things for inflammation. Great things for inflammation. That's great. Boswellia, I like that. I like Masuda Plus. A lot of uses for this. I'm very proactive on my frame. I love a healthy frame because it just feels decent. I'm doing this. Let's see if I got my own thing here. Good. Legoplex one's full of manganese. Collagen is definition. I enjoy being tight. We have glue in our body. 
Collagen is the glue. Now, my fingernails could probably scrape the paint <coughs> off the. Uh, I pick up my phone time. What time is it? Okay. I set my phone down somewhere. I'm not in the car. Good. I enjoy being glued together. My patients whose discs are gone learn to use an invert track. This helps decompress discs because the mineral deficient people, <clears throat> I don't use much. I have one in my living room. I don't use it because I don't hurt. I would use this more. I'm a trampoline person. Now look at this. This lady comes in. I want you to look at this. She says, I have a terrible pain here. I've been to six orthopedic surgeons. They're discussing where to fuse her back together. Look at that crooked spine. See how crooked that is? They want to fuse that together. I said, where do you hurt? She said, well, right here. She walks in and hurts right here. So I'm sitting in a room. She said, this is where the car hit me. The car hit me right here, right here. I hurt right here. She has a completely broken pelvis. Look, right there, right there. That's an old friend, it's right there. She's sitting on a donut in the office. Six orthopedic surgeons are doing rock, paper, scissors where to fuse this back together because of all the pain she's in. I circled it. I said, go back to these guys. And I wanted to be a little piece of fly speck on the wall. I want to watch them look at this x-ray with a broken pelvis circled. Look at this. Albanian lady. Fort, now watch this. She's the last of 14. Look, there's her hips. Right in the middle of her pelvis. The birth defect. She had no clue. She, her hips are in her pelvis. They're grown into the bone. She's number like 14. Ma ran out of minerals. And I looked at those x-rays. She was at the hospital. And the hospital was looking at these x-rays. I said, they didn't know what to say, did they? She said, they called everybody in. To look. They had no clue what to say. I said, it's purely genetics. Very, her hips right there. Not in a socket. It's here. And she walks. You know, back then, you, you know, you'd yell, your dad hit you if you said something, to just keep picking grapes and keep walking. <laughs> Unbelievable. Look at this. They don't even know they have this. Now, when these doctors, chiropractors, watch the open wedge on the side. Keep it from sticking. I keep these people from sticking. They stick together. And they get the nerves get stuck. Just keep them from sticking is all you're going to be able to do. Look at this. Look at this. Can you believe this? Look at this lady. How does she live like this? She had six kids. She had no clue she had that spine until she was 75. She smokes palm oil studs. She's very healthy, and she's sitting right over there. <laughs> Mary, stand up for a second. The key to life. I'm going to take up smoking. I'm just going to, I think you're in the, I think you're in a groove now. Let's look at that back. She never knew she had scoliosis till she was 75 when I shot the x-ray. If her dad was a dentist in Birmingham, you'd have been in a body cast, rods fused together with allergy shots, an EpiPen, and a peanut allergy. But you didn't know this, so you just lived your life with that crappy spine and never knew she had it. That would have been destroyed today if you had insurance. Unbelievable. There she is. Never knew she had it. Retired NHL goal. There's a name you all know. Nobody could fix his groin, so he retired. I adjusted that L1, L2 twice, and his groin pain stopped. I retired for that pain. I know you did. It was your back, not your hip. Simple stuff. Look where the nerve is. It's right here. This is the, well, every NHL player's got a groin pull. It's because L1, L2 is out from all the twisting, and nobody can figure out their groin pull. It's coming out of their back. It's not their groin. I've done 35 years of those. The mystery groin pull. Hernias. Watch what this will heal. It will surprise you what this will heal. Now, this is very, very important. I'm going to say something very important, short. Pay attention. The doctors would pay me a fortune to do what I'm going to do in the next 10 minutes. A fortune. Thank you. <clears throat> How do you like that walking in eight weeks? Yeah. 
I'm going to go up against everybody right now. Every single person. Right, Darren? You know what I'm going to do. Because I was, <clears throat> right, Darren? Dr. Axe had a big thing on about, you saw, you know what I'm talking about, how to alkalinize the body. Yeah. My staff's very irritated with all this. So the guys in hockey cornered me. I play hockey on a, a Friday afternoon with some of these guys for a long time. I do two leagues a week and two pickups. The pickups you don't want to lose because it's great guys. We've got a good group and they're hard to find. I do a lot because I'm in a groove. I feel fantastic doing this. If I could feel this good doing twice a week, I would. You can't. I push it very hard. I'm in good shape. I really enjoy that. So the guys cornered me because I like the shape I'm in. I don't care about hockey. It gave me everything in one spot. It was very easy to get in the shape that I'm in, having fun. This stuff tortures my soul. I have zero interest in this. So the guys in hockey said, look, can we ask you a question? Sure. It totally caught me off guard. Why are you so limber? Why am I so limber? Are you serious? What do you mean, why am I so limber? Why are you so limber? We watch you. You're not like the rest of us. I don't stretch in hockey. I can skate on the first. I go first. I'm done. I don't need to stretch. I will take off. And I skate aggressively because my legs are my strong. I'm drawing attention at 60 because I don't move like you guys. I'm not like you guys. I'm not stiff. I'm not all these men that walk. I've kept my body acidic. Dr. Versendahl years ago said, you're too alkaline. You need to be more acidic. How many people hate orange juice? How many people like orange juice? Raise the, all the people that don't like orange juice, raise your hand. I hate orange juice. It's your big clue. Orange juice. That better? My mother gave me orange juice all the time because I had allergies. I poured it down the sink all the time. All the time. Every time she turned around, I poured it down the sink. It bothered my stomach. I'm too alkaline. I hate fruit. I don't eat fruit. It bothers me. I was bottle fed too much iron, no zinc. It takes zinc and thiamine to make hydrochloric acid. I'm an alkaline dude. The Tabasco sauce, the pickles, all these kids got to have Tabasco sauce because their stomachs are dead. They can't digest their food because they're too alkaline. Their stomachs are full of gas. The kids are full of gas. Everybody's full of gas. And you go to all these guys that are making you more alkaline. They've blown it. You're full of, I've argued with more vegetarians about this than time can permit. They come in when their kidneys are full of stones. They got 8,000 kidney stones because they're too alkaline. It takes zinc, thiamine, and chloride ions to make hydrogen. Your body is an acid-consuming, acid-generating, acid-excreting system. You got all tangled up in this alkaline mess, which everybody got you tangled up in, and it's made a mess of all of you. Dr. Gonzalez said, Tent, you're the only one that sends me cancer patients with their pH adjusted correctly. I'm an alkaline dude. Everybody screws it up. The health food stores, the doctors, and I get a kick out of the internet. Once one idiot says it, they all say it. Everybody's the same thing. And everybody gets all excited because they read it from somebody that doesn't practice. These people are on the front lines. Don't listen to them. I don't. Listen to the guys on the front lines. That's the only one to listen to. This is a catastrophe. Two acids, I may, I'm very acidic because that's how my body keeps minerals in solution. Alkaline people precipitate minerals. That's why you're all stiff and stuck with dead stomachs and kidney stones. Your, or, your aorta is calcified, your teeth are calcified, your brain's calcified. And you're going to find out that that calcification caused your Alzheimer's on top of everything else. But I've had to listen to everybody tell me, oh, how'd you like your alkaline, there's the, there's the red wing pilot. How'd you like the alkaline water system? It was terrible. It was terrible. Everybody's been sold alkaline this and alkaline that and do your fruit and do your smoothies and do all your... It's been a catastrophe and you still, they still haven't woken up to what they've told you. A catastrophe. Everything from an animal is, is acidic. All the other things, the fruits and vegetables are alkaline. You cannot eat alkaline foods all day. It's going to make you sick. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I hate this topic. Everybody's killed their stomach because their food's rotting in their stomach. Everybody's, their food's rotting in your stomachs. You have waste acids. It's not too much. You don't have any. Unless you got a hole from Advil or one of your narcotics. 
The rest of you don't do that. Digestion aids. My stomach's fine. If I had a, I have a 10.30 hockey game tomorrow, if I went out to dinner at 8, I would take probably two or one of those. Two or one of these bottles. I might do a couple of I want to digest that food before I get in the ice. I want to be traveling light when I get there. My stomach's fine. I want to help it. If you want on a cruise ship, take your stuff. You're going to eat 10 times too much. Help yourself digest your food. Learn to use this stuff so you're not as full of crap as you need more than you already are. Watch. Here's a, here's a memory loss kid. I'm checking her for memory loss. Listen to this. How are you, Isabella? Good. Do you like spicy foods? Yes. Shake your head like you did for me. Thank you. Show her hair analysis. She can't eat without Tabasco sauce. There's an eight-year-old girl with memory issues that are not vaccine-related. A completely dead stomach. She's starving to death at eight. So the kids in high school are sucking Tabasco sauce out of the metal containers in the lunchroom. The nurses or the lunch people have told me this. They're sucking all that they're dead. They have to go to Chipotle's because they can't eat McDonald's because they have to have spicy things because their stomachs are dead at eight. He's got a craving? What's that? He's got a craving. No, it's just they can't digest it. So my friend that was dead, Dr. Dragon, on the last lecture, I'm at Ruby Tuesdays with two doctors. I do all these acids. I don't need spicy. I ordered mild buffalo wings at Ruby Tuesdays. Oh, geez, these are spicy. I handed it to my two doctor friends. You guys think these are spicy? They looked at me, you pansy, these aren't spicy, and these aren't, these aren't spicy at all. I have so much acids in my body, I don't need spicy foods at all. So my point is, an eight-year-old kid with memory loss at that age. <laughs> right here, these are the alkaline people. A huge paragraph to learn to understand. You hate citrus, you're stiff, you're achy. This is the story of my, these are the apple cider vinegar people. The apple cider vinegar people. <clears throat> I looked at read that. Now, animal versus vegetable. There's, a, there's sulfuric, nitric, and phosphoric acid it's hard to get rid of those acids. The vegetarians have lactic, pyruvic, carbonic, and organic food acids. You're, you're going to see me talking about acids. Green bile is, is pH of 4. Yellow bile is 8.5. You can learn your pH by looking at what kind of toxic bile you have. Acid-consuming, acid-generating, acid-excreting system. The body doesn't run on alkaline stuff. Everybody's been pounding on you that for 40 decades, and it's driven me completely nuts. The doctors have done it, the health food stores have done it, the internet's done it. It's wrong. Unbelievable. The mess people got themselves in. Cooked food and poor liver, adrenal, kidney function causes poor pH control. I live on two acids my whole life. Cramps, my legs are limber, my, my body's limber. It's very simple to keep calcium where it's supposed to be if your pH is adjusted right. Celtic salt supplies chlorine. You come in on Lipitor with a pinched nerve, it takes me three times longer to heal because it sucks all the life out of your nerves. Lipitor sucks all the life out of you. It takes me forever to fix somebody on Lipitor. Fish oils. I love, I don't eat fish. I hate fish. It smells like fish. <laughs> so I'm not eating fish. I take my oils, and that's why I look resilient still. Oils, oils, don't make you, because the wrong oils make you stiff and crusty with what everybody looks at. Good. A short little spot, and I'll let you get out of here. Now, this is important. Exercise has become interesting to me, because as my patients decide to exercise, different things have happened. I think you're on here, too. I have you on here. I think that was you. It was you, wasn't it? Is that you? You'll understand now. Number one, my patients are starting to try to exercise and they go to the gym. Now, when the average person goes to the gym, Joe went to the gym, he has not done this move in 300 years. So he went to the gym and he had both rotor rotator cuffs torn in two weeks. Two weeks, just like this. You get there and you just start cranking on, you will tear your rotator, they, they did that. You weren't the collarbone person, were you? No, I don't think it was you. 
It was, it was an Albanian that's as gorgeous as you, looks just like you. And she said, it, you know how they all say they're fat, even though they're not? It reminds me of you. And as she comes, this is, I, I walk in, and it, looks, it reminds me of you. And she's a great patient. I said, what happened to you? She said, well, my collarbone's all messed up. I said, what? Click, click. Well, she said, I look, look how fat I look. I said, well, you're not that. She went to the gym, and the trainer said she did this a thousand times like the first day. <laughs> how many times do you use this arm? You never do that. So he's got her collarbone dislodged. I said, well, how did you do it? This is hard to do. Well, I did it at the gym. Of course you did it at the gym. I saw one of my patients. I think this is one of the, patient, one of the people that Trump talked about. This gal was going to show off at the gym. She loaded up the weight, that uh, foot thing, loaded it all up to the top, wanted to show off to the guys, ruptured her bottom disc straight into the cord. Boom. You can't push sitting. So if you want to sit in a sitting position and push your disc backwards, stupid oh, you don't want to do that. One of my staff members rolled over in bed and told her, tore her shoulder loose. The people don't have the density for the gym. If you're going to go to the gym and hurt yourself, it's best for you not to go. People don't get hurt at Dunkin' Donuts. They get hurt at the gym. <laughs> <laughs> President Trump is looking at Lou Ferrigno on Celebrity Apprentice. He said, Lou, you look pretty good. Do you still work out? He said, no, not that much anymore, Mr. Trump. I've had both hips replaced, both knees replaced, and a shoulder replaced. What about you, Mr. Trump? Do you work out? He said, are you kidding? Everybody that works out that I know looks like you. <laughs> he said, I don't do nothing, and I feel great. <laughs> That's what they've done at the gym. They have wore themselves out thinking that was a good thing. No, that was a dumb thing. What's the secret to exercise? Don't do it. <laughs> when you exercise, there's nothing simpler Accelerate, decelerate, gravity. Everything. Accelerate, decelerate, gravity. Very, very simple. Right? Does that make sense? John Glenn, I read this book. That's it. I've been on trampoline for 42 years. Serious. I read that book. I don't know if you can find it. He explained physics. It's simple physics. When he explained the physics of this, oh my gosh, how simple is this? So I bought the program. The shape that this guy was in, he could do 40 one-arm push-ups. He could do 100 one-arm push-ups. His resting pulse was 40. He's a professional trampolinist, and he wrote the book. And the shape that he was in was mind-boggling. He could do anything because he was toned, pure tone. This whole family had a show. <clears throat> These are crummy trampolines. You want cords. You want to, they have good ones now, Bellicon. You want to learn the cords make it a lot gentler when you're older. And you want an expensive one. You ain't going to use a cheap one. You want a, I, want, I got four of them at my house, a 14 and a 16 foot in the backyard, and a two on the side. I'll show you that. John Glenn was carried off the space shuttle. Two weeks of no gravity, he couldn't walk. They carried him off the space shuttle in two weeks. What happens if you would have doubled gravity in two weeks? Or two, what would happen? You'd have been twice as strong. <clears throat> I spent a lot of time on that trampoline, densening up my body. And I would have had some guys in hockey, I would have filmed that I have run over by mistake that will never forget that day. Because it has not gone good, it was a total accident. If it, well, they didn't know it was an accident, oh, we would have had problems. As I knocked him out for 30 seconds and knocked him out of the league. He got, I was looking for a pass when he stepped into my high-velocity skate. I felt bad for Roger. I apologized to him publicly. Kelly. Hand weights, I do my trampoline. We had a team. How many years ago we have a baseball team? Ten years. Oh, we had a team. So I was playing left field, and I was doing my little exercise in my room that nobody knew I was doing. Lou was the pitcher. You remember Lou from the office? <clears throat> We're on a team. Lou's pitching. I'm playing left field. Somebody hits this ball to me out in left field, and I'm watching this guy tag up at third. I was a baseball player. I reared up, and I threw a strike home, and Lou looked at me and said, how'd you learn to throw like that the next day? I said, I've been on a trampoline throwing a hand weight 
for eight weeks while I was bouncing. If I was a pitcher, that's what I would do. If I'm a hockey player, I'm going to do my shot. If I'm a tennis player, well, you're fine-tuning. So as I'm bouncing, I'm doing this. Nobody understands this. Nobody does this. You will have a machine. It's, it's physics. It's simple. The guy from Oasis, a pro golfer who was a patient, said, how do I use a trampoline for golfing? I said, simple. Take a hand, take a, an ankle weight, put it around the driver while you're bouncing. Now, as you're bouncing, you're freezing different spots. That's the point. You're freezing different It's not this. This isn't anything. That's ridiculous. I want to freeze that whole motion. Everything's got used to this. So it changes everything when you fine tune. What, so I got him doing an ankle weight around his driver. So in six weeks, he comes in. I said, so how's it working for you? He said, well, I've, add, I've added 25 yards per drive. I said, is that a lot? He said, per hole? He said, you understand how big this is? Learn. So I teach. I was skating with some Chicago Blackhawk dude, your friend Nolan. We were skating over the summer, correct? I was skating with hot dog kids this summer. And they asked you what? How old is your dad? How old is your dad? He skates pretty good for, for that old. <laughs> so it's kind of funny. I said to Nolan, the Chicago Blackhawk, his name's Nolan Valu. I said, Nolan, he's a really nice guy. Learn to do your shot on a trampoline. Learn to practice your shot. He said, I've never heard of that. I said, say that again. I've never heard of that. Keep saying that till you realize you're going to have an advantage if you listen, because you've never heard of that yet. Learn to use a trampoline. I don't lift over five pound weights, and the shape that I'm in without over five pound weights is easy. It's not stressful. Almost done. My, <clears throat> and you got a gift today too. Just you got a gift coming. This is my chair and my weights. That's where I spend a ton of time. Right, Dylan? We fight over it. I've been able to have it because Dylan's pretty much on a, he's struggling right now a little bit. I think he'll be bouncing in probably a month if his physical therapist allows him to. It's all in his hands. All right, hit it. These are the Shishki kids. Can you jump? Now, this jump. kid's at my house. They, break, they come over to my house. Now, throw this kid on it, stand it. Throw this kid on a diaper. I got a 14 foot and a 60. He comes to my house, throws this kid on a trampoline, and walks away. Here are the kids in a diaper and a trampoline walking. I said, Dave, get over by the kids. He said, no, he grew up on this. He'll be fine. They left him alone on a fort. You know, he just sat and bounced this whole. Now, he's got sisters that are like eight. You understand what? His sisters do to your boys in gym. They've been. You don't even. You don't even want to know how bad. These are Kelly's daughters. My girls beat the snot out of your boys with your epipen and your club foot and all your stuff. This is bad. <laughs> These are Kelly's daughters. Kelly. Kelly's got twins. This is how you raise your kids. They will be sturdier than anybody in kindergarten. They will be stronger than anybody. In They're not vaccinated, no shots, no pills. And these kids, as they grow up, I'm telling you, they destroy everybody in gym. Okay, bounce. Right? <laughs> Dylan, how long were you raised on a trampoline? So. My lovely dentist comes in. He says, you know, your kid's kind of unique. I said, well, I said, he's never been a pediatrician. No shots, no poisons, no chemicals. I raised him on a trampoline, he takes the supplements. I said, he's different than the other kids. And I think he's getting better faster than the other kids, isn't he? He's getting better faster than everybody. I think he's beating just about everybody close. <clears throat> so we're having fun, but it's simple stuff. Now, next. Now, in this year, of dysfunctionalism, Mel Gibson had a very interesting movie that kind of sheds a more positive light on real Christians. An interesting. We went and saw Hacksaw Ridge, the authorized. Can a Christian go to war and become a Christian? You watch crazy Christians and crazy Muslims and crazy everything. Well, Desmond Doss was a real Christian. Now he went to war. How many people saw Hacksaw Ridge? It's an incredible movie. 
It's got a 10 minute standing ovation at the film festival. It was the longest standing ovation ever given. This was a huge hit. Now this, watching the real one, now the movie's tough for kids. That is a, this is, it's Saving Private Ryan's beginning, but worse. It is, it is a, because it's close combat war. It's brutal. There's a book, the authorized documentary of Desmond Doss. We have a copy for everybody here. This is your Chris. It's very inspiring for Christmas. There are real Christians out there. Now, for the kids, there's your homeschooling one. You want to watch the, the Conscience Objector Private Desmond Doss on YouTube. That's a documentary. The man, you will have trouble watching that because that's a tearjerker. This guy was treated, he wouldn't carry a gun. He was a medic, he wouldn't carry a gun. So the men that teased him, when he saved 75 of them off Hacksaw Ridge, it's brutal. Watch the YouTube, that's the good one, and it's a tearjerker, because this guy was real. I want to thank all of you for coming. I want to try to support the local businesses for Christmas, because the, as you know what the media has done to all of us, it's been a complete catastrophe. All our stuff and our lectures are online. We, we put this stuff out there so you can make some intelligent choices before you get yourself beyond the hope of repairing yourself. People are coming in past the point of recovery. I'm getting far too many end stage cases. I don't want, I want them while they're still alive because there's something to work with. I want to thank all of you for coming. I want you to have a wonderful Merry Christmas. Take care of the less fortunate, not diverse health services. And I want to thank all of you for coming. Thank my staff. Have a wonderful Christmas. <laughs>